Hi, and welcome to another old steam powered machine shop. We got some progress made on the rings and the slide valve for the Morris engine uh, uh, last week, but had to interrupt myself again uh, for a job that came in here. It's a gear job for, uh, uh, it's a transmission, a planetary type transmission that was used in a gas engine powered wooden wagon. It was a prototype, it was one of three, it was built in 1902 by Champion Wagon Works in Owego, New York, which is 10 miles south of here. And uh, if, you, if you look it up on the internet, Champion Wagon Works will show up. Uh, they had quite a run from the uh, late 1800s to about 1925. And uh, if you remember on my earlier, one of my earlier videos, when I was explaining about my drilling machine here, that drill press came from Champion Wagon Works. It was bought at auction in 1927 when they went out of business. Um, so I'll show you the transmission and the gear job today. And uh, I'd just like to thank you all for uh, the comments and the support. Uh, I see viewers here and there uh, that tell me they really enjoy watching the channel. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks ask me what they can do to support this channel. And I don't monetize this channel. When I started it, I decided to go a different route with it. And, uh, so Google is not interested in promoting it or recommending it that much, and I can understand it. They aren't making any money off it. That's their game. I appreciate that. But uh, if you want to support this channel, mention it to your friends. Recommend it to your friends if it's somebody that you think might enjoy it, and uh, we can really get the numbers up on this thing. So anyway, I'll, I'll go over there and I'll show you the transmission. This is the gear. Uh, it fits in here and meshes with these other gears, first set of gears. And you can see it's really worn out and beat up. And I don't really understand why this gear is so torn up and the rest of these gears aren't, unless this was made out of parts from another one. And this one was run without lubrication for a long time, maybe. Uh, so, anyway, we're going to start with a blank uh, 4140 on the lathe and turn the blank down and then uh, get started on setting up to cut the gear.
grenade uh, about a thousand and a half on your own. They send uh, right on the grenade to this end. I want to end up with a hole here. I want to be able to press it up tight onto the larder. Uh, I want the hole to be about 2,000 smaller than each of the names because it's got a cool, nice running fit on a shaft that's worn. So I've got a long way to go. This is inch. I've got 125 to go. This is the old gear. It's not a real critical dimension here, but we should get it as close as we can. Thank you. 
wound to cool out a little bit and get in deeper. duplicate this gear <clears throat> first thing I got to know is the diametrical pitch the diametrical pitch is just a kind of a specification for a certain tooth size it can be used on a wide range of diameters of gears <clears throat> and if you kind of think of it like a roller chain like like a 520 motorcycle chain will run on any size sprocket as long as the sprocket is cut for 520 chain. Same thing here with gears. <clears throat> uh, and in order to find out what specification size your gear is, this is a, actually it's a high school textbook, a college textbook from the early 40s. Um, they have these neat little charts here and you're supposed to be able to put the gear up here and tell what what your tooth is but the problem is the tooth is so beat up and worn out it's hard to tell what you got there so it's really simpler than that this book has the formulas laid out and any good machine shop book will have these formulas in it you don't have to memorize them or nothing uh, this has got the formulas to find something when you know something and something else. So you look down here uh, to find the number or to find the diametrical pitch when you know the number of teeth in the outside diameter. And this says diametrical pitch equals N number of teeth plus 2 over the OD. So that's going to be 22 plus 2 over 3 inches. These are standard gear formulas and most all, 
all the gears that I've ever run across uh, fall into these categories. So the diametrical pitch equals 24 divided by 3 equals 8. So that's the diametrical pitch. Once you got that figured out, then you got to come up with a cutter to cut the gear. <clears throat> now, I really like this book. This is this is a Henry Ford Trade School. It's a book that was published by the Henry Ford by the Ford Company uh, for their apprentice programs. And this particular one is 1919, and I like it because it's ver laid out very simple and very big. They got a lot of good diagrams in it. So. This is a range of cutters for a given diametrical pitch that will cut certain ranges of teeth. So we got 20, uh, 22 teeth. So uh, 17 to 20, 21 to 25. Okay, that's a number five cutter. So we need a number five cutter in an eight diametrical pitch. That's all there is to it. So, I have the cutter, and I'll get it. Here's the cutter, and the cutter usually has all the information you need printed right on it. This one uh, is a 14 and a half degree pressure angle. Now, most all the gears I ever came across in this shop were 14 and a half degrees. There is also is another one, I think it's 20 degrees, uh, that you'll find on more modern transmission gears and stuff like that, real high speed stuff. But most everything that I'm ever going to be involved in is going to be 14 and a half degrees. Uh, DP8, that's diametrical pitch, 2.2, 2 2.78. That's two and seven eighths inches in diameter. You can tell this gear was made in China. Uh, it's a number five gear, so that will cut in the range of teeth that we need. And uh, uh, it says right here, 21 to 25 teeth. But it doesn't give us what usually is printed on the gear is the whole depth that is how far you feed this down in to make a whole tooth so we'll go back to the formulas and uh, whole depth is equal to the constant 2.157 divided by the diametrical pitch simple enough Two point one five seven divided by the diametrical pitch, which is eight. So if you do the math, two point one five seven divided by eight is pretty darn close to. 270. Uh, the blank is pressed onto this arbor and it's between centers and uh, in order to center the cutter I just use a square like this square against the table and it's just touching here and I've got a small hole gauge here that just just makes it through here put it over on the other side and just get a little feel over on that side so that centers us up on the gear next thing is to set up the dividing head
and this is the old Van Norman dividing head I've been using and uh, in order to cut a 22 tooth gear you got to put the right plate in here so to figure out the uh, the dividing head on this job is not that big a big a deal uh, I've got a complete set of plates for this head I got these three here plus the one that's in it and this is the list of hole circles on all four of them so we want 22 teeth so first of all almost all dividing heads are 41 on the worm drive so you start with a 40 over however many teeth you want on your gear which in this case is going to be 22 and then you play around with this fraction uh, uh, I don't have a 22 tooth plate so we'll try doubling this and make it 80 over 44 and surprisingly I do not have a 44 I got a 43 and a 46 but no 44 so we'll go one more time uh, 40 times 3 is 120 22 times 3 is 66 I look over here and I've got a 66 hole plate it's right on this one the outside hole circle 66 right there that one so if you reduce this fraction down it becomes uh, 1 and 54 66 so that's the deal right there it's going to be one turn plus 54 holes on a 66 tooth uh, 66 hole plate and that's all there is to setting up a dividing head and I can change out this head real quick or uh, the disc the plate Sixty six.
That little horseshoe washer spring put some tension on this so it'll stay where you put it. Okay, then you gotta move this plunger out up so that it's engaging the stopper in the last row. Okay. Next thing we got to do is to set this quadrant. So that it's 54 hole apart. 54. Correct take. Okay, so I got our little spreader indicator here set up. <clears throat> We're going to go one hole turn on a 66 tooth plate plus 54 holes. So that leaves us 12 holes shy of two turns. So I'm setting this one up like this. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So every time we index this, okay, it's going to go around one whole turn plus fifty four holes. And this gets turned around to the trailing side. Do it again. While I'm waiting for the steam to come up, I'm going to repack this valve rod uh, packing gland. I can't remember if I ever did it since I've had the engine, but uh, I'm having to tighten these nuts up pretty tight to get it to stop leaking. Uh, and it's quite a ways in so it's probably going to be a real pain getting the old packing out of there but we'll see how it goes I don't even know if I can get to it. Oh, yeah. Looks like I did repack it. Mm, ain't much. Just put a piece on top of what was already there. That right there is probably the original stuff. Uh, woven uh, fiber. I don't know what the heck they used. The new stuff is impregnated with graphite and a few other things. I'll get the last of that out of there and then I'll pack it.
I don't know if you can see that, <clears throat> but it takes, looks like it takes 5 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths thick packing, either round or square, and I think I have some square. <clears throat> That's the old stuff I dug out. That's something I put in on top of this, and I think this is goes way back. See how it's worn and burned in here. So there's some new old stock stuff. I don't have any brand new five sixteenths, but this is pretty good. And what I want to do, this is a piece of broomstick. It's about the same diameter as the sh shaft, the valve rod. I want about three and a half turns on this. Actually, I can't do that. I got to do it in even numbers of turns. Here's our three rings. idea is to stagger the joints. They don't have to butt up together perfectly. Might be able to get another one in there. Here's one more ring. I suppose you could cut these diagonally, but I don't think it's really necessary.
when I get it running, I'll tighten these up just a little bit more. It's something I've been meaning to do for a long time. I haven't got around to it. done. I'm going to index it.
marked this hole right here when I started and it's come back to it uh, at the halfway point at 11 feet. I don't know if that happens every time or not, but I know it comes back up to it on the last two or on the first two when you come back around.
you go back over here, index it one more. You come right back in the mark where you started. Little deep burr on this side, and it's done. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Looks like it meshes perfectly.